Hello everybody, Adam Corey here once again with another video tutorial. In this Adobe Fireworks graphic design lesson you can learn how to create ribbon wrapped seals to give your seals an added enhancement that not many others would implement. Okay, first thing we'll do is create a new Fireworks document and here is where you can mess around with the width and the height if you need it to be inches or centimeters or pixels and you can also set your resolution here if you need a high resolution image for output for print design, you know what I mean? Uh, so what I'm going to do is just make one that's maybe 600 high and 900 wide. I'm going to leave my resolution 72 because mine's going to be output for the web. Optimize JPEG for the web. Okay, 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 I, I got my canvas size wrong. It's supposed to be 900 wide. By, just make it 500 high. Doesn't matter what size I make mine because I'm just going to make my seal really big and then I shrink it down when I want I'll uh, I'll flatten it I'll go to modify flatten selection and then I'll shrink it down to the size it needs to be on the web page but I'm gonna make it really big okay first let's draw a star or you can use an ellipse if you just want a circle really whatever shape you want I'm gonna draw a star for mine I'm gonna hold shift as I draw so it stays uniform and then I'm gonna mess with the points I'm gonna grab this little dot right here so I can mess with the points add more subtract them I'm gonna put maybe that many and then I'm going to drag this up to about right there and that looks good to me I'm gonna move this around and I'll see the center line so I'll have it centered in my page there or in the canvas and if you go into layers you can see there's that auto star shape or star auto shape now what I'm going to do is grab an ellipse and I'm gonna draw an ellipse inside I'm gonna hold shift while I draw that and let's see how the size of this is. This is uh, 430. Let's make it 430 by 430 for the star. So the circle can be an even number. I'll pull that down. 388, 388. And if you don't have those tooltips, I'm going to make it even smaller. 370. If you don't have those tooltips showing you the size as you're dragging, you can go to View. Make sure Tooltips is selected. And then you'll see little sizes like you see on mine there. 360, 362, you see what I'm saying? Now we can take that and just put it dead center right there and we can make it whatever color we want. I'm gonna make my gradient linear and my colors are gonna be, instead of white, I'm gonna put this yellow and then I'll put this orange on the bottom. Actually, I'll make this yellow a little more orange by mixing it there and then I'll make this orange on the bottom a little bit darker not much actually I'm gonna make it a little more yellow on top like I started with so indecisive okay alright that looks good it's got a little gradient okay now I'm gonna grab the text tool and I'm going to type in F and lowercase w capital F lowercase w you can see the text I'm using or the font rather is Adobe Fan Heidi STD Let's make this a little bigger, 140 maybe right there, that's good, very good, and we'll put it in the dead center, or well, not the dead center, but we'll center it on top of this little circle. Now I'm going to take an ellipse, and I'm going to draw that right into this other ellipse, and I'm going to make it shaped a little different, like, about like that, that's good, okay, 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 and I'm going to make the gradient on that linear, and let's say white to white and on the white on the bottom we're gonna make the opacity a little less and there you go now I can add some effects to this star I can go to filter and I can go to inner glow and I can give it inner glow of black and I'll just change the color of it so it's not so dark actually let me give a I'll give that star a gradient of satin. And I'll change the satin from white to uh, like a dark gray and then on this side black. That looks very good. Okay, so I'll go back to my inner glow filter, bring that down to two and that down to two. Actually, we'll leave that at three. Bring that all the way up. Uh, leave it down okay now we'll bring this down a little bit so we see the whole thing there okay now we're ready to put our ribbon on our seal and the ribbon's going to go 
across it and it's going to say certified on the ribbon. Okay, now let's grab the pen tool and you're going to have to just draw a ribbon in. So I'll start maybe right around here. I'll click down and I'll hold a little. I'll drag up just a little bit. Then I'll let go. And you can see I have it still holding on there. I'll go right about here. Twist it a little bit. Not twist it, but bend it a little bit. And then continue this way. You see what I did? Now when I get to about here on the other side, it looks about even. And you can even hold shift. See how it snaps? When I hold shift down, it snaps to an even coordinate on the other side. I'll hold down, I'll click down now, and I'll make the arc I want for that ribbon. You see? Right about there. And then I'll click down here, and then I'll drag a little bit, just to make a little rounded edge there. And then come down to about right here. And I'll do the same thing, make a little edge by holding and dragging a little. And then I'll hold shift, come around to the other side, and looks like right about there. We'll hold down, and then you want to match the arc that's on top. Then you just click down here, make a little curve, and then meet this line right there. So what I'll do is give this a fill of black. And since this one side looks better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a rectangle right now. I'm going to chop that thing in half. I'll hold both of them. See how I have my rectangle on top of this shape? I'm going to select both of them by holding shift. The way they're both selected, I'm going to go to modify, combine paths, and punch. Then I'm going to grab this one, control C, control V. Go up here to my flip horizontal tool, or you can go to transform, modify, transform, flip horizontal. And then I'm going to put it in place to where it matches up right about there. I'm going to take the edge off, the white edge off of both of those and make sure it's in place right. I'm going to highlight both, modify, combine paths, and union. Alright, that looks good enough. Now you can deselect everything, grab your pen tool again, and start maybe right about here. We're going to draw a line from here to right about there. And then we're going to come down here click and hold down and we're going to bend in and if you can see mine you can't see my line because my line is actually white but I can still see my shape there so I'm going to click down here to make a tight curb or a tight corner rather and then I'm going to go right about here click and hold and curve that line a little bit then I can click here here and then there whatever I want because I'm going to send that to the back anyway. So you see this one? We're going to give this a gradient of linear. And we'll just switch that. We'll make this black. And we'll make this one a little lighter. It's where it's lighter on the bottom. Okay? Now let's just send that to back. Control, Shift, Down Arrow key. So now you can see that's sent to the back. Now let's take that. Control, C. Actually, let's move that gradient down just a little bit. Right about there. Control C, Control V. What that does is copy and paste another copy right in place, but don't move it. You can just flip it perfectly. You can see where your Y coordinate is, is 328. So you can just take it and put it on the other side. Make sure you're still at 328 and move it in. So where that dot matches up here with this one on this edge. See? That dot matches that edge of the ribbon. This dot here matches that edge. So you'll know you'll be perfectly in line. Now what we'll do is put a gradient in place, make it look really rounded on the edge of the ribbons here, so where it looks like it's really wrapping around. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, a little less wide. So it's a little bit wider than I want it to be. That looks great. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by holding Control and then mouse wheeling. So I'll zoom in just a little bit. And on top of this ribbon shape, I'll grab my pen tool. I'm going to draw in a shape that kind of matches that, but I'm just going to make it squared off. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll go right about here to there, then down to here, then right about to there. Especially when I shrink this, it's not going to be very noticeable. So everything's really, I'm making it, I'm drawing it really big right now. But when I shrink things, it won't be so noticeable that there's a little square there. 
Well, what I'm going to do to that little square is I'm going to go to the gradient. I'm going to add bar to it. And then I'm going to adjust that gradient to where that line, you see how that bar line is the direction it should be going this way instead of straight up and down. Now what I'll do is make sure this one's black on the edge, which it is. We can bring that in just a little bit too, actually, right about there. And that looks pretty good. So now let's go back out to 100%. Let's move that into place where it looks like it should be. And then let's bring the opacity down to about 32 on it. Now you see what that did? Let's bring it down a little even more. That makes it look like there is a sort of like a fold there in the ribbon. So if I take that, control C, control V, flip horizontally, it's at 273. I'll move it over to this side, 273 Y position. And now it looks like both edges kind of have like a little bit of fold to them. Now I just need to put the word certified right inside this space here. So to get the word certified curved, I'll just grab the pen tool. I'll start right about here. Then I'll go right across to right about there. And I'm holding shift to keep it nice and straight. And then right about here, I'm going to click down and hold. And I'm going to bend up until I match the curve of that ribbon. And then I can just hit the pointer tool. Now I'll hit the text tool and I'm going to type in certified. I'm going to make sure that's white and bring it down in size. And I'm going to stretch out the word a little bit, space the letters a little better. That looks good to me. Make the size a little bit bigger. And now I can just attach that to that. So I'll select this line that I made, the curved line and the text. With them both selected, I'll go up to text, attach to path. And then I can just grab it and move it down. I'm using my arrow keys to move it down with it selected. And we can even grab this little sphere or that ellipse and give it an edge if you want. Black. Or you can remove the edge and just give it a filter effect of maybe glow or something like that. Make glow, black, zero, down to four, a hundred percent. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you can create seals that have ribbons wrapped around them, or really you can create anything you want with ribbons wrapped around it. Just anywhere you want to have a fold or somewhere where it's coming up, you would just put a bar gradient like that. Now, if I take this whole thing, control C, and I go and I make a new file. You know, you would want to save the raw one that you're working on back over here. Save that as an editable PNG. So you can go to File, Save As, and just save that as a Fireworks PNG file. So you'll always have it and be able to edit it and junk like that. And the new one, you can just flatten. You can go to Highlight Everything, go to Modify, Flatten Selection, and then you can make it the size you need, say for a web page maybe like that who knows that's a hundred percent and that looks pretty dang groovy and people can still see your folds in your your little ribbon and your effects on your little uh, ellipse there and everything now what you would do on that is just fit canvas and you go to file export wizard and here is where you can select an export format I'm gonna select the web exit and then I'm, I can choose any format that I want if I had a high resolution file that was set for print design I would go and you know render out as TIFF 24 if I wanted it printed or even TIFF 32 for a higher quality PNG 32 with no background you can have this have no white background have it be a clear opaque background with PNG 32 if you wanted and then you just press export and you name the file whatever you want and that's how you export it but I'm going to use a JPEG, and I can have the quality at 80. That's fine. And look how small that file is. It's 6 kilobytes. It's nice. Then I just export to wherever I want, call it whatever I want, .jpeg, and that's how you do it. And if you want no background on that, you just go to Canvas here and set it to no background. And then you'd have no background on that. And that's it, my friends. We'll see you next lesson.